What's good YouTube? Nate with Master Collector back with another Masters of the Universe figure review. Uh, today we have Trapjaw, who is one of my favorite characters from the um, the cartoon and the series. Um, I just love the fact that he's got a robotic mechanical arm and attachments that he can put on. Um, just gave you different things that you could do with him. You know, just growing up, I thought he was the uh, one of the coolest villains that they had. He wasn't a very smart villain. Him and Beast Man are kind of the the doofuses of the uh, henchmen on Skeletor's side, but uh, just the way that they made his figure with everything, just really cool. I mean, bright colors, dark colors, everything just kind of went together really, really well. So what I have here today, I have my original trap jaw. I do not have any of his weapons or attachments anymore. Um, I definitely played with my toys quite, quite a bit when I was a kid. So I can see a lot of things getting lost at school or, or wherever these things went. But all in all, you know, he's not a bad looking character still, but we'll just go through them one at a time. So this one here is the Club Skull. Uh, filmation series that came out. I believe this was um, Trapjaw. I think he was a uh, Maddie Collector figure. We'll have to take a look and just to double check and make sure. But I have his attachments. And then we have right now the new in package ones. I have Super 7's Filmation 5.5 inch figure. That they put out a couple years ago which is 2019 actually so this last year and then i have trap jaw origins um from mattel which was just released uh this the second wave was just released uh, about a couple weeks ago so um so we'll take a look again at you know line up the packages same as the other figures we've looked at the uh the origins card to me looks a little bit more on the retro better side just because the the lava rock has a little bit more detail in the background it's more of a starry uh sky back there whereas in the super seven it's you know a pretty dark sky the lava rock looks good but uh, a little bit more detailed over on this side i like how it says is ages 14 and up for the the super seven um releases i mean it was such a release for adults more than anything and mattel's kind of getting back on track with you know making them more affordable and attainable especially for for kids so not just collectors but also kids because um i think they're making enough in volume where everybody can get their hands on it for retail price so that's what i've seen i don't know how what you guys have seen out there but uh, I live in a small community in Northwest Wisconsin. We have one Walmart, one Walmart. That's it. No shop going, no nothing anymore. And the closest, uh, largest city to us is about 50 miles away for the next uh, Walmart. So, um, and there's definitely been plenty of hanging around. You can get pretty much all the figures at Walmart right now from the last time I saw it. So let's get uh, let's get cracking and we'll open up the uh, Super 7 version first. I think that's usually what we do. But before that, let's take a look at the side profiles again. You can tell that the bubble packaging on the on the Origins is definitely bigger. Again, just to hold more hold more weapons and. I think it's really just because they want the figure to look more poseable too, so it's not just straight up and down, whereas that's what you kind of see on the Super 7 side. Um, back of the Super 7, you'll have the old school comic look, trap jaw, uses his vicious jaw and numerous arm attachments to attack the heroes of Eternia. So it basically just shows you, you can just stick on whatever attachment you want into his hand and then his jaw. So laser gun hook and pincher plug into right arm. You make his iron jaw move. And then it shows you the line that came out um, 
with these folks. These Filmation five and a halfs, which were which were really good. I like them. Uh, the comic on top here, cybernetic criminal can literally arm himself with any weapon he needs for battle. So he's got his hook um, and his uh, clamp that he shot down to a tree, which he's kind of zip lining on the, uh, the hook on his head, coming down to fight He-Man and Man-in-Arms. And again, uh, plug laser, gun or hook, or pinchers into arm, open and close jaw for biting action. So here's the second wave here. Uh, Manny faces Orko, Trap Jaw, and Scareglow. So um, I haven't been able to see these or order those yet, but Trap Jaw got him right now, so we'll go through him. All right, let's pop open Super Seven. Here's his uh, card, comic card that comes with Trapjaw, which is cool. So Trapjaw's initial design for animation saw him look a great deal like his action figure, which his detailed robotic arm bearing a great resemblance to the toy. Once the character model was finalized, the decision was made not only to shorten the arm, but also to increase the magenta of his color scheme. So he definitely got brighter in color. Like Attachments here. Jaw moves, all right, up and down a little bit. His head, pretty stiff, but you can twist it all the way around if you wanted to. Arm. Again, his legs are on joints instead of rubber bands. Um, his belt is an extra piece, but it's, it's put on there before his body was snapped on, it looks like. Um, but yeah, I mean, color wise, very, 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 you know, identical to the, uh, to the comic, to the cartoon. Um, see how his weapons fit on there. Definitely <laughs> looks cool. So that's his cannon arm, his laser gun. Uh, here's his clamp. Attachment and his hook. And you can see all of these attachments have this little hook on them. So you should be able to hook them into his belt, but he doesn't have any spots for it, which is kind of a bummer. Um, you know, even the original figure had hooks available on his belt that you could hook on his attachments to, like that. So that's kind of a bummer that he doesn't have that. But I think mainly they wanted to go with, um, you know, exactly kind of how he looked on the cartoon, which he didn't have those. So maybe that's exactly why they didn't do it. Um, but you can tell the differences between the original figure um, he's got the skull crossbones on his belt uh, if you remember he came with a power ring with a skull on it that glowed in the dark when you bought him on, on card when you were you know back in the 80s now this one's been beat beat up pretty good I wonder if this will 
Look at that. You can use attachments on the old vintage figures. That's cool. And then you could always hook them on here, I guess. So that's that. That's a Super 7 one. Vintage. Um, and then we will open up the Origins. Uh, I'm not going to open up this package though. This one's actually decent condition, but this one here is the, the other one I got from Walmart. And I'll show you the video on how they showed up right now. Just got a shipment from Walmart for three figures of Trap Jaw. This is the box they put them in. This is how they show up. So this one, you know, it's not terrible, but the corners bent. This one here, they just didn't give a f just crammed it in there whatever way they could and I, and I understand you want to try to get everything in a, one box but so we'll open this guy up for the review and then the last one here not terrible I guess but it's just man we wish they would just step their game up a little bit might return them I don't know if I can find some later I might return them later just want to show you guys be aware of Walmart so as you can see from that video Walmart just pretty much crams whatever they can into a box so buyer beware you order from Walmart this is how they could show up so I ordered three of them knowing that some of them might not be very well and I want to do reviews I want to open it up and I want one on a card hopefully so we're gonna open up this one This is a new, the new comic for the Wave 2. So Double Trouble, looks like Orko's got a clone here or something. Um, but again, so the, the characters in this comic are gonna be the ones that are in Wave 2. So you have Scareglow, uh, Trapjaw, Manny Faces, and Orko appear in this comic. Gotcha, twerp. So it looks like a nice little comic. I'll have to t take a look at, read these up. You think you're scarier than Scareglow? You know it. Got He-Man in it. Not a whole lot of Manny faces. Oh, there he is. And then on the back. The, uh, the classic look of the the back of the cards of the old figures so I just love these figures from Mattel um, all right so the origin figure I'm just gonna compare the, uh, the attachments because they look almost identical if you can see that like the same size So the same size, just different color. All oh, the the round. I mean, it looks like they're a little. There's some slight differences, right? So that part of the gun is kind of tapered as it goes down. A little bit bigger ball on the end of it. Uh, these ridges here on the gun are definitely uh, bigger and more closer knit together than the uh, the Super Seven one. Uh, the claw looks more realistic on the Origins attachment and then on the hook uh, pretty similar again but the the origins just looks more streamlined more realistic this one just look more bulky and uh, simpler like the cartoon version so makes sense uh, figure wise I just love the colors on this guy um, the green just really pops Again, here you can see his 
So his head is on the swivel again. It doesn't uh, rotate as freely as some of the other figures. Maybe that's because of his jaw and the back of his helmet. But he does have the zip line hook. Um, the eyes are different. So like in Super 7, cartoon wise, white eyes, black pupils. They flipped it on this one. Did not give him any eyebrows either. So he's just got black eyes with yellow pupils is what it looks like to me. And same type of thing here on the vintage, he had green eyes with, with black pupils. And with the other filmation, we got white with black as well. <clears throat> um, his arms, you know, move like the other figures. Around, up and down. Uh, you can swivel his his elbow up and down, and his arm can move around, and it's on a swivel as well, so you can do all kinds of different positions with him. It's like the other ones. Definitely gave him a very longer, wider um, cuff to more like the vintage. They did not paint the vintage with green here, but they did on the origins. That's kind of cool. Give them a little bit of extra color. Um, same type of thing with the uh, the legs, the green armor there on the thigh. Same type of look. Um, boot wise to the vintage line, it's pretty damn close. A little bit bigger, taller uh, shin area here versus the original, but. These are a little bit taller than the, the original. They're more like six inches than, than um, five and a half. But you can see on his hand too, they definitely gave him the same type of look with those with those lines on the top of his uh, hand there. Same thing on the shoulder. Um, we'll compare the guns here, vintage to the origins and it looks very similar. The big difference here though on Origins is that you can move his uh, elbow um, around, which is nice because that just gives you more opportunity to, you know, give him uh, different action poses. And what's it's awesome because it goes up and down and you can also swivel it too. So, so many different poses you can do with these Origin figures, it's great. You know, it's just so cool. The things that you can do with this guy. You can actually, you know, like he's holding it, point it straight away. So really nice figures. Um, put on his hook. So yeah, super neat. I just love these origin figures. Um, on his belt, more nodded towards the vintage. Obviously, it's got the, the skull and crossbones. Um, definitely, they went with that more fluorescent green color than the original, which is more of a, like a mint green, almost. Um, so his legs, same thing. You can articulate them any way you want. Out, down. Uh, his knees move and swivel, his shins move and swivel, and again, his the foot on him though seems like it only goes up and down, it doesn't go right or left because of his like ankle guards on his foot, you can see that. But otherwise, um, lots, of, lots of different poses you could put this guy in as well. Uh, he also has the hooks on his belt, so whatever attachment he's got on his arm. And these are really easy to put in here. They're, they sit in there pretty snug, it stretches. So it's cool. You see the attachments on this back of his belt. This is, this is a great addition to put on here, just like the original. So that was, that's great of Mattel to do that. And just the the uh, extra articulation on the elbow up and down and, and side to side is, is phenomenal. A 
just a great way to be able to add just a little bit extra to a figure but make all the difference in the world so love the origin from trap jaw this is great here's the super seven version which again you know you don't have that elbow can't move so you're kind of limited but i think i don't know i mean this line is nice and i think it looks better on card than just you know standing up like these would with all different poses but um kind of gives you that you know the same size that we had when we were kids and the filmation color scheme and look to it which is which is great but um this figure blows us out of the water as far as like playability posability uh here's the vintage and then we have the last one i can compare is my probably my favorite one is the uh club gray skull this has a lot more articulation to it. Of course, you know, you got your, the jaw up and down, the head can move all the way around. Um, move these guys out of the way. His arms, you know, same type of articulation as the origins. Move his hands, his elbow, arm out. Um, you only have up and down for his cannon arm, which, you know, that's pretty much all he could do in the cartoon. So that makes sense. Um, his jaw, they actually have his body, like his torso can move back and forth. Um, his belt is separate, but it's definitely put on there after, you know, like before his body was assembled. So you can see underneath there is actually his, his other belt looks pretty good too. But so that's there, green cuffs, you know, his cloth garment there. Uh, legs move this way. You know, you can spin them a little bit. His knees move. And does not have a shin movement or knee does not move you know swivel um, and then his his foot has a little bit of a, a twist you can put on the bottom of it and then it goes up and down so that's the articulation for the cult the club gray skull trap jaw which i believe is for maddie collector because i know it kind of got split up between maddie collector and super seven when the license got switched over um, and Maddie Collector kind of stopped doing their figures, which was a shame. Miss Maddie Collector, they're the ones that started the classic line. Uh, so the attachments that came with this version are more true to the the cartoon, it seems like, or they or they just gave us some ones that were, you know, a little on the odd side. So remember the the swatter that he has. Uh, so they gave him that one. <laughs> I remember that from some of the cartoons. And then they also gave him the, the crossbow as well that you can put on his arm. I think it shot out like laser arrows or something like that. I got, I'll have to double check it, but that's kind of what we got with these guys. I'm always partial to the, to the cannon though myself but this one will go on like that. Oh man, they're tough to get on. Just that, the ball. So we'll just leave him off. Put this guy back on like that. So there we go. So all the figures kind of reviewed there. We have the Club Skull. We have Super 7 Filmation, five and a half inch figure. We have the Origins figure, which I just love the look of this guy. Um, everything about it, just the colors just pop, super vibrant, lots of poses. Definitely my favorite one um, so far in the Origins line as well. And then the Vintage. So hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um, really enjoyed doing these and comparing all these figures from past to present and the different types i do have a classics trap job but he's still in the box and i don't plan on taking him out of it 
yet or if ever so i don't have him in the review but i do have these figures out so i wanted to kind of go through all of them so appreciate you guys watching it if you haven't subscribed yet please do so that would be great I really appreciate that smash that thumbs up like the video and then if you want to be notified of future content um, please hit that bell and uh, you'll be notified